The benefits to public health is nothing. There is no reduction in cervical cancer caused by this product. Quote, unquote. This is the lead researcher for Merck, all right? So I'm, I'm advocating that you fight this introduction. I don't know about the other vaccine. What I do know is about Gardasil. And I'm advocating that you fight this with every, with every strength in your body because your children are going to get sick from it. And once they get sick, it will not ever go away because we're talking about autoimmune disease. And once that introduction is, is given into a children's bloodstream, it does not go away. It's permanent. Thank you. Thank you. Josh? Is it Gary? Yes. Could you um, state and spell your name for the record, please? Yes. My name is Joshua Gary. J-O-S-H-U-A-G-A-R-E-Y. Thank you for having this discussion today. When I was about to become a parent for the first time, I looked at the vaccine issue very carefully. I concluded that it would be a spiritual sin for me to inject potentially dangerous substances into a healthy human body, especially a young one. The risks far outweigh the perceived benefits. I requested the actual inserts of ingredients, side effects, legal disclaimers, and so forth from our pediatrician. It folded out like a map into a double-sided maze of the tiniest fine print I have ever seen. I spent several hours reading it with a magnifying glass. I researched more and learned that a federal vaccine injury court does indeed exist, unconstitutionally separate from our normal justice system, and it has paid out several billion dollars of our tax money to victims. If others want to trust multinational pharmaceutical corporations whose legal liability is practically none and in whose best interest it is to have a returning health compromised clientele, that is their business, but it is not the choice for our family. If people want to take a vaccine whose listed side effects may include shedding, which is really code for being contagious, I can only acknowledge that with protest, since that is clearly as great or greater a threat to public health than unvaccinated people could ever be. If your vaccines work, what are you worried about? Herd immunity is a false concept or people wouldn't need boosters. Stop telling people they have to take drugs too for your drugs to work. It is my opinion that vaccines weaken the natural immune system instead of strengthening it, strengthening it, as we are told, and that it's not an accident. People who are against vaccines are not anti-science. We are anti-malevolent science, and denying that malevolent science exists will eventually lead to catastrophe. Thank you. Hello, how many is Catherine, C-A-T-H-E-R-I-N-E. Uh, Lightfoot Martin, M-A-R-T-I-N. I'm a midwife here in East Hawaii, and I'd like to share a brief history of childhood vaccinations with you in the United States. In the 1950s, four vaccines were offered to our children, and children received the total of five shots by the age they were two, never more than one vaccine at a time. And at that time, the U.S. ranked third in infant mortality in the world, which means only two countries had infant mortality rates that were better than the United States. In the 1970s, we increased the number of vaccinations to 14 for our early childhood. At that time, the CDC had to develop a way of addressing the growing numbers of adverse effects being reported. That was the precursor to the Vaccine Adverse Event Reporting System. In the 1980s, they combined the measles, mumps, and rubella vaccines into one injection called the MMR. Children received this combination shot at 15 months and again at 18 months, along with the other um, dozen or more vaccines. At that time, the U.S. ranked 17th in infant mortality. Whoa, that's a big change from third. The 1990s, we increased the number of required vaccinations to 20 injections in early childhood. They added vaccines for hepatitis B, herpes, and the flu. In the 1990s, they introduced thimerosal, the mercury preservative in vaccines, which caused lots of injury vaccines, uh, lots of injuries from vaccines. And at that time, the U.S. ranked 23rd in infant mortality we're getting worse. Now, we have seen an increase of nearly 414% in the number of vaccines being given to our children since the 1950s. 40 shots are mandated in childhood total. Seven of those include combination shots, which is multiple vaccines in one injection, which means we're giving a total of 54 vaccines to our children in total. Americans are now required by law to use more vaccines than any other nation in the world. And now the U.S. is ranked 49th 
actually that was 2012, I think, I believe the number is worse now. 49th, we are worse than any other developed country in our infant mortality. Is this really the best we can do to promote and protect the health of our children? The evidence says no. In 1975, Japan raised its minimum vaccination age to two years old, meaning that zero vaccines were given to babies until they reached the age of two. After that, the infant mortality rate in that country became the best in the world. Most children in the United States today receive 20 vaccinations or injections in their first two years of life. And we are the worst infant mortality in the world, or the worst of developed countries. Is this really the best we can do to promote and protect the health of our children? The evidence says no. More open-minded countries like the Netherlands have studies showing that eliminating childhood infections and episodes of fevers lead to increased numbers of chronic diseases and cancer. That's right. The people who experience more fevers in childhood have significantly lower rates of cancer as adults. So we may be sacrificing or giving our children a chance to not experience an episode of fever that's going to put them out of school for a couple of weeks now, because, and then we're sacrificing their future health giving them chance of autoimmune disease and cancer for their future. Is increasing the number and types of vaccination for our children really the best we can do to promote and protect the health of our children and our future? The evidence overwhelmingly says no. Therefore, I urge the Department of Health in Hawaii, please do not increase the number and types of vaccinations for our KP, and please continue to offer pathways for informed refusal of vaccinations for conscientious objectors. One more thing I'd like to say is, if you look at the rankings of the infant mortality, the countries who are ranked the best, like Japan's still at the very top, and many, many more, all the European countries are ahead of us, they do not have mandatory vaccine schedules. They have recommended, recommended vaccine schedules. And that's just what I urge uh, Hawaii to take the lead and do as well. Thank you. Is there Ione Chittenden? I-O-N-E-I-O-N-E-I-O-N-E-I-O-N-E-I-O-N-E-I-O-N-E-I-O-N-E-I-O-N-E-I-O-N-E-I-O-N-E-I-O-N-E-I-O-N-E-I-O-